A single player demo for Mass Effect 3 has been released. I've been eager to get hands on time with some of the new changes and decided to throw together a quick first look for you guys. The demo goes by fairly quick, allowing you to play two missions from the story about average length. While it's built like most other games, appealing to new players and teaching them how to play the game, seasoned players are able to take note of what's changed and what's been approved upon from previous titles. After pressing start, the first thing you'll notice is EA is keeping up with its effort to kill secondhand retailers and game rental companies. You'll need an origin account and another access code that comes with the game in order to do anything online. Also, the Terms of Service prohibits the commercialization of gameplay footage without permission, so any of you non-partners wanting to monetize your videos might run into some trouble here. Let's start off with the options menu. The ability to disable autosave has been removed, which was the first thing that I noticed. Also, hints and action icons are now a toggle. Hints pop up on the screen when first starting out, and action icons give you a visual representation of places that you can climb, or jump, or exit cover as seen in the first level of the demo. The narrative section is new. Conversation mode allows you to disable the typical Bioware dialogue response wheel. Between this and a new setting at the start of the game, which I'll show in a little bit, it looks like they're trying to appeal to the action-adventure crowd now. Subtitles has also been moved to this section, and there are two new settings that allow you to control whether or not Shepard and your squad mates will wear a helmet during conversation scenes, which is a nice addition. The controller section is basically the same, southpaw and flipped bumper trigger is supported. Graphics still contain brightness, but they removed the cheesy film grain effect from Mass Effect 2 that failed to be the major selling point they were hoping for. Finally, under sound, they have a new feature, Dynamic Range. I left it on for the demo, and through stereo speakers it sounds horrible. If you don't have surround sound, you'll want to leave it off. Once I put the Astros on, it sounded better, though it still feels heavily emulated compared to other games. I may sing a different tune after the game comes out and I get more time with it, especially after trying out multiplayer. When starting up a new playthrough, you'll be asked what type of experience you want. Roleplaying is the mode that you will be familiar with if you've played previous Mass Effect games. The new modes Action and Story are an effort to branch out to appeal to more gamers. Action simply takes out the dialogue wheel, but Story dumbs down the combat quite a bit. The facial profile feels very familiar. Thankfully they remove that awful scan every few seconds that you saw in Mass Effect 2. I wasn't happy with any of the presets, so I started messing around. I thought I did alright here, though the forehead still seemed a little too big. However, once I got in game, the difference during cinematics was disgusting. Don't trust the facial editor at all. It may take several tries to make Shepard look tolerable in-game. Despite what you see during character creation, it will look a lot different during cutscenes and cinematics. In-game, the controls feel familiar. Right from the start, they want to show off that jumping has been added in several places. It is still situational and marked by action icons. It's too late in the series to add jumping physics, but this isn't really a replacement for the ability to jump whenever you want, which was a common complaint about the Mass Effect series. I found this to be a lame attempt at appeasing people, and it doesn't work. You can see the new action icon setting at work here. When you toggle it, you can disable the big arrow where you have to use jump. Physical attacks and combat dodging still feels the same, and it's very smooth. Here, the transition from gameplay to cutscene is seamless and doesn't feel out of place at all. Other areas of the demo do have loading times, so it's hit or miss if you're going to lose your sense of immersion. Weapon combat does feel a lot better than previous titles. The ammo indicator on the left side of the screen only received a few minor tweaks, but the difference is amazing. The addition of color contrast is simple yet extremely effective. Reloading time also seems to be about half of what it was before, which should speed up battles significantly. Recoil is a lot more noticeable than it was in previous titles, going for the realism aspect. This requires more player involvement and skill than just aiming, which I think was a great decision. Weapon upgrades do make a return. I'm excited to see what's available, but they didn't let you get your hands on it in the demo. The concept of tougher enemies with shields, armor, and health stays truly original. If you've played the previous titles, you'll feel comfortable navigating through the powers and weapons just like before. Semi-auto fire rate is not capped, and in the demo it appears there will be no issues with weapons overheating, which many people found annoying rather than a challenge to manage. Another great HUD change is the shield, health, and party indicators. In Mass Effect 2 you had the single swoop, which would tick down as you lost your shields, and then change color and tick down again as you lost your health. Also you had icons for your two party members, letting you know who was alive. Their faces would blink red when taking damage, and the gray indicator reflected their shield status. 
In the Mass Effect 3 demo, you can see you now have two separate indicators for your shield and your health, which is split up into 20% blocks. This has been implemented cleanly and doesn't get in the way at all. Really well done here. Also, you're able to see which powers your squad members are using, and the cooldown timer is very visible without any confusion. This does appear to come at the expense of the shield indicator, but we'll have to see that when the game releases. The next change you'll notice is the objective indicator. They removed the yellow wheel in the bottom corner of the screen, and now you'll see an arrow telling you which direction you need to go on the sides of the screen. It also appears that they removed the audio notification, so hopefully you will not have to hear this annoyance ever again. The red grenade indicator might make a nice new addition for casual players. I found it to be a distraction and tend to rely on the audio clues instead, but I can see where it will have some value to some people. Enemy health indicators are much more responsive and switching quickly between targets is seamless. You should no longer have any issues knowing what target you're on and the way the health is broken up now is a huge improvement. For gameplay changes, I was sad to see the bypass door minigames are gone and now you just stand there doing nothing. A lot of people were complaining that the minigames felt out of place and unrealistic, but I enjoyed them a lot more than staring at an orb glow for a few seconds. It doesn't feel like I'm involved in the door process at all. Now this just feels like a time sink, albeit a small one, but there's really no reason to have door bypass at all since it serves no purpose. Yeah. One of the changes I like the best is that they took the idea of Dragon Age's dialogue wheel, which has no default starting position. I always play with subtitles, and in previous Mass Effect games, if you skip conversation because you read ahead and the NPC just wouldn't spit out what they had to say, a lot of times this caused you to select a response because the wheel always has an option selected by default. You'd select random things to say instead of the things you wanted to choose. This was a huge annoyance and it ended up causing me to reload my saves several times. Now you can safely skip ahead. Like they created for Dragon Age, now you have to move the wheel to select which option you want to select. I know this won't be exciting for a lot of you, but this simple change will save a lot of headaches for many players. The level up screen received a few tweaks, and also the way powers rank up have a new twist. In Mass Effect 2, if you went to select a rank of something higher than what you had and hit the button to purchase it, you would automatically buy the next available rank. Luckily, you could unspend the points if you realized you did it, but it was unfriendly and had a very foreign feel. Now in Mass Effect 3, each skill uses an entirely new window when selected. You can't buy future ranks until you manually buy the previous ranks. You can clearly see the benefits each skill upgrade will give you. The last three ranks have a new twist now, which adds additional customization to your character. You have the option of choosing between two benefits, which will allow you to specialize exactly the way you want to. Do you prefer shield recharge delay decreasing, or would you rather have your squad made shield stronger? Be warned, some of these decisions will be hard to make, and you'll wish you could do both. It's all part of the fun, and I like the fact that they implemented this. As far as bugs go, the demo was not perfect. Mapping powers in the command wheel is confusing, and it does not work correctly. Now while they borrowed Dragon Age's conversation wheel tweaks, they did not figure out a way to leave this wheel in a toggle state, and I think this is because of the fact that bumper buttons are mappable. Even still, hitting B to map something to RB, or hitting X to map something to LB, just feels awkward and unnatural. As you can see here, the settings don't even take hold. I'm not sure if this is a bug or by design, but if I want something mapped to Y, it should be mapped to Y. It should not reset to another button as soon as I close the window. An already awkward mapping system left a bad taste in my mouth after trying to use it. Also, the pop-up notifications are tied to the HUD and can't display during cutscenes. Cinematics I understand, but when a transition like this happens, you'll see something flash on the screen. What was that? I never would have known that I gained 750 experience here unless I went back to edit this footage. I'm guessing this problem will be harder to fix, but hopefully they'll be able to patch it before we run into this issue too many times. All in all, I had fun with the demo, and I am looking forward to the release in a few weeks. I did not have a Battlefield key, so I can't cover the multiplayer yet, but I will take a look and put up another review on that when it is available. I do plan to cover this game heavily on my channel, so if you want to see achievement trophy guides, quest walkthroughs, and all kinds of Mass Effect 3 analysis commentary, then be sure to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the demo in the comments, and thank you for watching.